Thank goodness mighty mouse is on his way. So let the trumpet players play. For mighty mouse is here today. Here he comes, that mighty mouse. Just like a bolt from the blue. With a heart that's true. Fighting evil, fighting crime. And always there in the nick of time. Here he comes to save the day. And he will prove that crime will never pay. So let the trumpet players play. For Mighty Mouse is here today. Oh, Mighty Mouse, where are you? This is the end. Goodbye, all of you folks in TV land. Goodness, you arrived when you did. I was nearly fish food. Oh, it was nothing. Those were just sharks. Give me an arch villain any day for a real challenge. An arch villain? <gasps> sharks are enough for me, thank you. I wonder what makes them so mean. I wonder what makes an arch villain. And that's our story today. What cornucopia of criminal elements conspires to make an arch villain? Can it be cold, uncaring destiny that is solely to blame? Or is it merely bad luck? This is the tale of one poor soul cursed by a horrible trick of fate. This unlucky fellow sports a rather distinctive calling card. Hey, uh, bud, how's about a trim? <laughs> that reminds me. Uh, I gotta go boil an egg. Hey, did you see the ball game last night? I'll say, the Yankees made a clean shave of it. This is the pitiful story of a man cursed by the name of Petey Pate. Don't ever call me that! <laughs> Fate sometimes deals a cruel hand. This poor soul has nowhere to turn, no place in society to commingle. I'll show them. People would take me seriously if I were an outlaw. No, no, not an outlaw. An, an arch villain. So with that, Pete, uh, um, Mr. Pate visits his neighborhood arch villain supply store. Now all I need is a couple of burly henchmen. Yes, sir. The world had just better make way for this arch villain! <laughs> Watch me, boys, and see how it's done. Uh -oh. Give me all your dough, signed, Petey Pate! I can't understand it. I got a swell new hideout, a great suit, terrific henchman. What more do I need to put myself over as an arch villain? <laughs> Here you are, Pearl, safe and sound. <sighs> Honestly, Mighty Mouse, I could have walked to work, you know. That's it. I'll get respect as an arch villain by defeating Mighty Mouse. I'll get 
Pearl Pure Heart as bait for Mighty Mouse. We'll need a trap, a clever trap, something no one else could think of. It's got to be something ingenious. Falls our fair eared heroine, Pearl Pureheart. So, you're the famous girlfriend of Mighty Mouse. This is certainly a great honor, isn't it, boys? Da, yeah, yeah boys. boys. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Mighty Mouse means nothing to me. <laughs> Such touching loyalty. <laughs> it chokes me up, it really does. <laughs> Unfortunately, your foolish display does not impress me in the least. You do know Mighty Mouse! You know his strengths, his weaknesses! No! No! Yes! And now you will tell me his weaknesses! No! Tell me, girl, or I'll... What is it you want? What are you after? What am I after? What am I after? I'll tell you what I'm after! I want to own all the left shoes in Mouseville! <laughs> Why, you're mad! <laughs> mad? You think I'm mad? I'll show you mad! <laughs> <laughs> ah, we better calm him down. Everything seems so clear now. The herd is gone. Let her go, boys. I don't know what came over me. Oh, it's all right. You're through it. You're so good. Go home now. I'll be all right. Whom should I thank for this kind deed? Uh, they call him Petey. citizens of Mouseville, I have a message for Mighty Mouse. I challenge that muscle-bound rat to a duel. I'll prove to you weasels that I, Petey Paint, am the strongest of all. And if Mighty Mouse doesn't show up, no one will ever see Pearl Pure Heart again, except on legal holidays. And so, Mighty Mouse, if you're listening now, meet me at Mount Pate for the Battle of the Century, if you've got the guts! Oh my gosh! Pearl is in trouble! What to do? I've got it! I'll follow the TV transmission to its source! <laughs> Mighty Mouse, don't do it! Go back! It's a trap! Hold on, Pearl, because here I come to save the day! Now for my trump card. <laughs> Gad, I'm twisted. Shake, can, wow! Stuff is as thick as country music. I'll miss 
you on those legal holidays. Is this the end of Mighty Mouse? Has the final hour come at last? Wait, what's this? This is more than a mouse, folks. This is a champion, a great champion, a miracle mouse. Here he comes to save the day. Foulest deeds laid waste by this, this rodent. I'm forced to use my last ditch attempt. No, it hasn't been tested yet. <laughs> well, even he can't take this much. <laughs> why? Why did you do this? So I look good when they take my picture in jail. This about wraps up the case. And so, once again, justice is served well, and a large debt is owed to the greatest of insectivores, Mighty Mouse! <laughs> For this, I got a third degree tan. story at the Mouseville Elementary School, where miceling minds are gently molded for a future of mature thought, of quiet contemplation and orderly... Well, anyway, today was Orphan Scrappy's first day at school. Hey, you want to go catch some apples from old man Weasel's tree? Nah, my mom's baking up a batch of cookies today. Hey, how about you? You want to go watch him scrape grease off the rags down at the car wash? Sorry, kid, but my mom promised to take me to the zoo. Well, I'll tell you this much. If I had a mom and a pop, those other kids wouldn't have nothing on me. Hiya, little fella. My name's Pearl. What's yours? Scrappy. What's it to ya? Just trying to make friends. Well... Thanks, lady, but I don't really need any. I've already got the best pal a guy could have, and his name just happens to be Mighty Mouse. You don't say. But in that case, why so glum? Well, I'm just a little worried that a guy like me, with no mom and dad, might not have a chance to turn out as swell as a guy like Mighty Mouse. <sighs> See what I mean? Not really. You know, Mighty Mouse was an orphan, too. You mean it? Could you tell me more about it? Well... Please! Okay. First of all, Mighty Mouse is not from here. He's from a strange and alien world a thousand blocks from here, where they don't have nice little houses like we do. Oh, uh, excuse me, but I believe the narration is my job, is it not? Not this time it isn't. So just butt out, Buster. <clears throat> As I was saying, the mice in this other neighborhood don't live in cute little houses like we do. In fact, they don't have houses at all. They live in holes in huge cavernous structures called buildings, which are also inhabited by humans. Perhaps the gravity is heavier in this alien neighborhood. Or maybe the very air is different. No one really knows why these other mice are so different. But one thing is certain, they must be mighty indeed to survive under such hostile conditions. And into these harsh conditions, a child was born of loving parents, Laraj and Aral. Will they believe you this time, my beloved Laraj? If they do not, my beautiful Aral, then they are more than the shiftless fools living only for the moment. They are doomed. At least, at least we've made plans for our child. All right, come on, come on. Let's get the gloom and doom over with, huh? But I tell you, it is true. Our whole world soon will be destroyed. Ah, uh, you've been telling us the sky is falling for the last three weeks. 
Yikes! Yeah! Yeah, and the living's easy now that the giants have split the joint. I tell you, this time I have irrefutable proof. This building condemned? Raj proven right. Together, he and Aral carried their beloved child to the escape vehicle carefully prepared for this very fateful moment, adding an ample supply of nourishing Limburger for the long journey's end. Oh, Laraj, I, I'll miss him so. At least, dear Aral, he will survive to grow up in a better neighborhood. Technology is a tool which may never, never, never be trusted. Bon voyage, my son. Travel well and age supreme. Never fear, my dear. We can always find a new hole in the next building. Meanwhile, the thousand-block journey was long and dangerous, fraught with unknown and unknowable stresses. <coughs> <laughs> the baby mouseling held up just fine. But something extremely ominous apparently happened to the onboard provisions. But finally came the dawn over a forest on the outskirts of Mouseville, where the fateful journey at last came to its end. <coughs> the force of the crash split the tightly wrapped cellophane, spewing the altered Limburger in all directions. Limburger Act, henceforth, Mighty Mouse's sole vulnerability. But, getting back to our story. Land sakes, Pa! What caused that noise? I don't rightly know, Ma, but there seems to be some sort of obstruction here. What in tarnation is it? Burned if I know, Ma. Looks to be some kind of newfangled flying contraption. <laughs> Can't be too newfangled if it only flies straight down. It's the child we never had. Yep, let's call the little tyke Mike. And thus was the alien baby adopted by kindly Ma and Pa Squirrel. Gosh, Pearl, that means Mighty Mouse really was an orphan, too. <laughs> Didn't I say you two shared a lot in common? Yeah. Well, so come on, Pearl. Tell me more, huh? Well, it wasn't long before the squirrels began to detect subtle differences in their adopted child. Something mighty strange about that tyke. Mama! I think Paul just might have a point. <laughs> yep, something mighty strange. In the years which followed, the young mouse grew, and grew, and grew, and grew. It finally happened, Ma. Our tree has gone plum nutless. Then, how will we ever make it through the winter, Paul? Good 
question, Ma, especially with them crows being hungrier than us. Here I come to save the day! Ah! He may have saved our lives, Ma, but there's one thing we just gotta face. Our son is not a squirrel. This is true, Paul. But then, just what is he? Well, near as I can figure it, he's nothing less than a mighty mouse. I'm glad you brought that up, Ma and Pa, because there's something I've been meaning to bring up. And believe me, I'm grateful for everything you've done for me, but... Your Ma and I understand, son. You're feeling it's time to be moving on. Why, yes, Pa, that's it exactly. And also, I feel a need to use my abilities for the good of all. And with all them ruffians over to Cat Town, no doubt they could use a fella like you in the big city. That's it, Ma. I, I, I'll go to Mouseville. Good idea, son. And if you'll just pluck me out of this here pile of plenty, I'll go stitch you a right fancy costume out of them blankets you came to us in. And so was born Mighty Mouse, tireless champion of truth and justice, bane of bad cats, and hero of oppressed mice everywhere. A miracle of a mouse, shaped from a childhood just as humble as yours, Scraps. Gosh, Pearl, a story like that kind of makes a guy's eyes sweat. In fact, I'm so choked up and proud, I, I'm ready to burst. <laughs> to think of a fellow orphan turning out as swell as Mighty Mouse. Golly, I wonder if he's even got a secret identity and what it is. No one knows, Scrappy, but whoever his secret identity is, you can bet he's an honest, hard-working guy. <laughs>